folks, and uh, welcome to today's show. Uh, we have uh, we usually uh, manage to uh, uh, beard Dr. Lawson a couple or three times a year uh, when things are going on in the school system, which is very important to us. And we haven't talked to him in several months, so uh, we thought we ought to catch up. And there actually are three or four significant things uh, going on there that I think you'll be uh, quite interested in. So. Uh, Dr. Lawson, thanks for taking the time to join us. And uh, Tom, it's always good to be here. Thanks for having me. We uh, we look forward to uh, chatting with you. You made uh, a couple of three fairly significant uh, uh, personnel moves this year. We did, uh, and and we were blessed in the fact that we had some great folks in in their previous slots. Um, Dean Holland, who had been with us for about 22 years decided that he was going to spend more time on the golf course and he has uh, he has certainly enjoyed that transition. Dean left a great void. He was um, knew everyone in the state. He knew where the bodies were buried at the State Department of Education. So he was a, a great resource for us. Uh, we knew we were going to have some big shoes to fill. So I was able to pull Susan Fanning in from uh, Jack T. Farrah Elementary Susan, while she doesn't have a lot of that um, historical background that Dean will have, Susan is a, a very skilled educator, strong with data, uh, and brings to our central office a strength with elementary education that candidly was a deficit for us. So we're really excited about that placement. Mm -hmm. As Susan was moved, created a, a vacancy at Jack T. Farah, so I moved Debbie Edens, who had a, a great track record at East, in fact, just came off the year of having the best growth in middle school value added in the state of Tennessee. So moved Debbie across to Jack T. Farah, and then Charles Lawson, who has been an assistant principal at um, Tullahoma High School, was moved to East Middle School. I think in total, uh, I just move some people around uh, in some different schools to maximize our our uh, challenges that we face and maximize their skill set and based on the first seven eight weeks of school it looks really good hmm. okay all right very good well let's take a, a short commercial break folks and we'll uh, we'll talk some more All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles at Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. talking today, uh, folks, with uh, Dr. Dan Lawson, the uh, director of Tullahoma City Schools, and uh, we're trying to catch up on some pretty significant uh, things going on there. Let me start by uh, saying that uh, there was a lot of uh, heartburn, if you will, between the school superintendents or directors and the education commissioner uh, at the state level. Uh, a lot of heartburn there for two or three years and uh, so he finally went away and uh, Dr. Candace McQueen who was the Dean of the Education School at what Belmont? At Lipscomb. Huh? Lipscomb, yes, okay. Uh, so she is in the business right. and uh, she went into the Commissioner's office. So how are things going between the uh, Superintendent Directors and the, uh, right. the new Commissioner? 
Uh, former Commissioner Huffman was truly one of the, the smartest gentlemen I'd ever worked with. Uh, he was keenly aware of a trajectory that he wanted for a million students in the state. But his ability to sell was somewhat deficit. His uh, relationships that were developed with the 140 superintendents uh, was a little bit of a challenge. And I think that ultimately uh, the commissioner's job is a, a tough, tough task. So he spent four years in that role. I, I think he had some measurables that were really good for him and some measurables that weren't so great. And one of those was in, in relation to relationships. Dr. McQueen saw that void. The uh, governor saw that void. And I think he wisely selected someone who had a skill set that connected back with uh, people first and foremost rather than data. Uh, Commissioner McQueen uh, was reared part-time in the state of Tennessee. Uh, Commissioner McQueen has an undergraduate degree from the state of Tennessee, started her public school teaching experience in Clarksville, Tennessee, where she had attended school. Um, she went, has gone on and done some great things in, in public education at the higher education level. Um, being an executive vice president at uh, Lipscomb University gave her a tie to public and private schools in the state, gave her a tie to uh, coordinating in-service programs with teachers, coordinating teacher development programs and teacher prep programs, and I think she had a pretty keen awareness of, of the needs and challenges we face as a state. But first and foremost, Commissioner McQueen is, is one who relates very, very well with people, one who listens very well, one who reacts very well, and one who um, I think in general has, Im has been embraced by uh, the education community. I think the, the dialogue and the marching orders she carries are not different than the marching orders that Commissioner Huffman had. Um, her, her sales pitch is, is much smoother, a little more skilled, and if we would like to bring some closure to how do we get along, um, we have a convocation every year where we have um, 500 or so employees uh, dialogue and, and talk about goals and expectations and where we hope to be with the coming year. I invited Commissioner McQueen to lead that dialogue this year as our, our convocation opener. She graciously consented to do that, uh, assisted as we uh, gave away, as Stan McNabb Auto Group gave away a car to our Teacher of the Year. Uh, she's just a warm, embracing person uh, who I think is providing great leadership for our Department of Education. Good. But the name of the game as the governor started out, improve tele, uh, Tennessee schools. Absolutely. I, I think the governor has a focus in his drive for 55 to make sure that 55% of our state graduates uh, have certification, have a degree that prepares them for the workforce, that prepares him to compete for jobs for our state. We get that. We understand that. And likewise, we think that's important. Well, it's been, and in, in the industry itself uh, has been complaining about uh, the fact that they, they, they're not getting employees that can, that can do their work. And so uh, there's, there's, been a, there's obviously a need there, and the question is how do we, how do we get it filled? And, uh, but so candidly, most of the complaints that I'm hearing from industry won't relate to the academic skill set as the deficit. Instead, they're going to talk about soft skills that are a much bigger deficit and a much bigger challenge for folks to overcome. Will you get to school and work on time? Can you pass that drug screen? Do I expect you to honor your word and your expectation and your challenge that is placed before you? Those are are intangibles that are, are terribly important to the workplace and terribly important to me as an employer. So I, I think that if anything, 
the past administration had talked a lot about let's focus on the numbers and let's make everything quantifiable when a lot of those character issues and soft skill issues that are critically important in the workplace and are pretty dramatic deficits kind of were pushed to the back and I, and we think it's important that character be the first thing that we work on developing okay but one of the other things that uh, that uh, there seemed to be uh, complaint about from the indu industry standpoint was uh, give us somebody who's uh, been trained a little bit to think absolutely and that's a fairly critical skill it, by it's, uh, it's a terribly critical skill and we would suggest that um, at times over reliance on bubbling in test sheets doesn't produce that ability yeah, to think yeah. so okay well uh, teacher preparation is there uh, is there progress uh, there is there is there change there is there is there progress are we improving there is a, a belief, and I happen to share this belief, that, that teacher preparation is a, uh, a difficult task at best. It's an inexact science at best. And is there progress? Yeah, I think so. Um, years ago in teacher preparation programs, students started school, uh, started their undergraduate program, and they would attend school for three years, and then their fourth year of school they would jump into the teacher preparation courses and classwork uh, to be culminated by a, a student teaching experience. Well, the, one of the frustrating elements of that is you've taken three years worth of classwork and you get to a classroom of second graders and you realize, wait a minute, this is not what I'm cut out to do. Yeah. And there's a little pressure from home to finish. There's a little pressure uh, that you place on yourself that says, I need to go out and get to work. And so I, I believe at times there were, we put folks in a bad position because they really didn't know the obligations and the expectations of some very difficult jobs in the field. So now you've, you've backed up the uh, hands-on in the classroom experience into their, what, second grade, first we, or second? We literally year? will have those activities taking place now in their first and second year, as Motlow has a, a partnership with Tennessee Tech and a two plus two program, they will have those internships, those field experiences happening in their first year of school. We think that's essential. We think that gives kids an opportunity to see what a teacher is really up against from a different perspective. And it, it gives them a chance to be a much better informed learner. Are there still deficits in teacher prep? Yeah, I think there are. Uh, we still have some challenges in being as competitive as we need to be with the best students. So we will have a lot of students who go on into, um, into many fields with stronger entry level test scores, with stronger GPAs, and candidly, a part of the reason for that is simply economics. They can make more money elsewhere, so they never darken the door of a teacher education program. Flip side, we've got a, uh, a stronger set of teachers being prepared now than ever before, but I never want to leave this conversation without a statement that's terribly explicit, and that statement is, most of what happens in the classroom is about relationships and we've got to find ways to match those folks skilled in those relationships with the needs that we have in our classrooms. Okay. Uh, well, with that, let's, uh, let's take a short commercial break, folks, and we'll come back and talk some more. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. 
Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with uh, Dr. Dan Lawson, the director of Tullahoma City Schools. And uh, so we're finding out what's going on in the school system to um, make things better. Uh, Let's talk about uh, testing for a minute. I see that you've got a new, a new online test. You're going to, so you're testing. Your students are going to be doing their testing online, number one. And number two, it is a new test. Right. So uh, how's that going? And that's supposed to start this year. And uh, you have to have the right devices. And then, of course, you're going to have to have the, the practice, the skills to to go right. with that, so how is that going to go? You've, this is coming up. Uh, sure is. It is here. It It's on us. Um, first testing is, is not new. As we think about standardized testing in the state of Tennessee, um, this is something that we've been doing in grades three through eight for years and years and years. In fact, the last three decades or so. Um, we have had any number of iterations of tests to measure progress uh, in that TCAP umbrella in grades three through eight. But those tests have been either appended to no set of standards or appended to different sets of standards. This year, uh, by virtue of a, a test that's developed out of the state of North Carolina with a company called Measurements Inc., we will have an assessment based on the 10 ready standards. So this will be the first time that the state of Tennessee has the 10 ready standards that are assessed by an assessment. And we're going to actually see how well those standards relate to, uh, to what we're doing in our classrooms and what our kids are actually retaining. The reason that we've transitioned to a, an online model is to provide for quicker feedback and ideally to provide for an easier assessment process as well as utilizing things like open-ended answers rather than just fill in the blank. So the online assessment will have um, much more dialogue, much more essay that's included in the work. So an essential part of, of our preparation has to be an understanding that we're not just measuring their skill set, we also have some measure of how well they can utilize the technology. So as we've transitioned to a district that incorporates one-to-one, -one, it's important that our teachers and our kids practice utilizing technology because it's going to show better for them as they're assessed at the end of the school year. Now, is the assessment at the end of the school year our end-all and be-all? Absolutely not. If, if there's any one assessment that we focus on as a community, it's our ACT. And the reason we focus on that assessment is the state of Tennessee has opined that we ought to be about college and career readiness. The ACT is the one measure that truly opens that door for, for the college and truly assesses the four core areas and how well we have purportedly prepared our students in that, in those fields. Well, we can uh, we can do a little uh, focusing there, as uh, as you were saying a bit earlier. I had uh, raised the question of that our TCAP scores uh, last year were sort of middling, and. Uh, you indicated, uh, yeah, they may be middling, but that's not the that's not the test that we really look look at. And, and I can and, illustrate that with a great example. I've got a 
a middle school teacher who sat down with me and his principal and we talked about the fact that eighth grade standards in mathematics um, were such that some of our curriculum wasn't covering some of those standards. So my, my obvious follow-up was, then why don't we change our curriculum? His retort was, this feeds into our math program at the high school, and we believe that geometry is better served for our students to be taught at this level. So we think they're not going to get this skill set at eighth grade, but they're going to get more than what they need at the 10th grade. Bottom line is, we may take a ding in eighth grade mathematics based on what we do, but we think the long term on what we do with the ACT is better served by this approach. We think that's a, a reasonable thing to do. We think that's a prudent judgment. And we really like the idea that we're a system that has that dialogue about what's the best approach, not for what happens in May, but for what happens with this kid's life later. Yeah, well, and you're, uh, you're saying you're your approach is to make sure that your eighth grade and your uh, is integrated with uh, with with the high school uh, system, and uh, which doesn't necessarily uh, pin doesn't necessarily reflect directly what the, the right. state tests are going to do. And it, it certainly so, should, but I I really think we're pretty Covey-esque in how we do this work. We really begin with that end in mind, and that end in mind is what we want our high school students to be able to accomplish as they leave the program, which is a heck of a lot more important to us than what a seventh grader needs to accomplish. Yeah, okay. Well, another thing <clears throat> that I think is uh, worth mentioning is that uh, this is the first year in which uh, the test and the, uh, the, the test is directed at what's being taught in the school. With the teachers have been complaining loudly, and I think rightly so, that uh, they have been getting tested for the last uh, three or four years at least, uh, getting tested on things that, uh, that they're not teaching to. Right. So uh, that's, a, that's a great boon, and uh, I'm sure that, that that lessens the burdens on the teachers by quite a, quite a measurable thing. So. Well, in the uh, in the process now, you're going to have a new test, and uh, and it's going to be compatible with what you're teaching, and uh, that's going to feed into the evaluation system. And my question really is: Are the are the teachers uh, going to be better satisfied with the evaluation system now that we've got that? that portion of it cleaned up at least. Um, you know, I, I think um, as we looked at the evaluation system and the new implementation that, that came along a couple of years ago, uh, what the teachers have um, experienced is an understanding of what the real implementation looked like. It's not as nearly as onerous or as scary as some expected that it would have been there is a tie-in with the academic performance with about half of our teachers but candidly I'm probably hearing as many complaints from the other half who don't have that direct tie-in who are compelled to take uh, the overall performance of a school as a measure of their effectiveness rather than their individual their, test score their personal, uh, so, so I think there's there's not been as as much drama as we had expected and I guess like a lot of things in life, it's not as bad as it could be or as good as it should be. Okay. Well, quickly, we're going to run out of time, but I think there's one that's a, a particular fascinating. you got a couple of Chinese teachers that just got sort of got dropped in your lap uh, in the last two or three months. You know, I guess we were, we were fortuitous. We were lucky. Um, sent a couple of people to China to look at their schools. And we were in the process of developing plans to utilize and to acquire some Chinese teachers for next year. After they came back, within three weeks, we got a phone call, and that phone call said, door has opened up. We've got some teachers if you'd like to interview a few. So uh, we found the obligations were minimal. In fact, cost us absolutely nothing this year and gave us a year to kind of plan on the fly. 
Bottom line, Tullahoma High School today, we've got kids taking Chinese language uh, first semester, this semester, next semester, so they're going to be able to knock off two years of Chinese in, in one school year. And we're excited about that opportunity. And we have the two middle schools sharing another Chinese teacher. Okay. And we have two Chinese teachers that are uh, living in Tullahoma and uh, roaming around town. So if you see them, uh, smile. Uh, with that, uh, folks, we have run out of time. So we're going to have to take a short commercial break and uh, wrap up. The Kia Summers on Us sales event is going on right now at Russell Barnett Kia of Tullahoma. Let me tell you about this event. Purchase a new Kia Sedona, Kia Optima, Kia Forte and receive 0% financing up to 66 months and your first three payments for free. For a limited time only, no strings attached. With America's best warranty, the 10-year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, Kia is the power to surprise. The Kia Summers on Us sales event going on right now. Why buy anywhere else? Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We're back, uh, to folks. We've been talking today with Dr. Dan Lawson and uh, catching up on some things going on in the school system, systems, if you will. And uh, so, uh, Dr. Lawson, uh, have, you, have you got a word you'd like to uh, spread directly to the folks? Yeah, I, I, a couple of words. You know, it's, it's easy to to get locked in a world of, of talking about assessments and talking about numbers. And I think it's important to share with our community what we think is important and what our priorities are. We're about developing four C's in our kids. So as we think about what we want to develop, first and foremost, we want to develop young men and young women of character. Second, we want those young men and young women of character to be competent in their work. That's measured on a TCAP, that's measured on an assessment, but it's also measured in the portfolio that they bring home. Third, we want them to work together in groups because a lot of folks that we hear from say, you've got some smart kids, but their chemistry is not good. So we want their chemistry to be such that they work together in groups and can work well in a workplace. And fourth, there are tough things in life and we want them to behave with courage. So we're about character, competence, chemistry, and courage. And I that's see. our calling. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, Dr. Lawson, thanks for uh, joining us. It's, uh, it's always interesting. And uh, we, uh, of course, we consider the uh, school system to be uh, our greatest asset. And we're, we're very interested in what's going on there and how it's, how it's working out. So. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us into your parlor, and we will see you next time.